I would So Namaskar Bundugan, uh, welcome back to another episode of uh, In Conversation With. Today we have got a very special guest with us. Uh, he is a media expert, a sports journalist, a commentator, a sports advisor, and a football, uh, football strategist. And with over 23 years of experience in both India and Germany. So, well, if it isn't obvious by now, of course, we are talking about Arun Nabu Chaudhary, sir. Uh, welcome to the channel, sir. Um, Thank you very much. Sir, the first of all, my first question to you is, like, we know, like, what a commentator's job is or what's a media expert's job is. But we aren't really sure about what is the day-to-day -day work of a sports advisor or a football strategist. If you could elaborate on that, it would be very helpful for the audience as well. So uh, someone who does strategy, so that's part of the consulting work, strategy and advising um, is that you uh, work for different entities and look at uh, what they currently have, what are their ambitions, where do they want to go and then work out a roadmap with them um, where you can take that entity depending on it can be a federation, it can be a club. It can be a league. So, you know, th that depends on different entities that one can work for. And um, it's, 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 a strategy says it's strategizing and giving a strategy and giving a plan, so to say, on how you would be willing to take something forward and how to work on something. Okay. Okay. So, like, uh, like I know you have, you were born in Ramscheid, if I could pronounce it right. Yeah. So Kemshat, like, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. So like if you were born in Germany for a person who was born in Germany, how did you come into this? Like you are very much involved with Indian football. I know you have his origins back in India, but still you're born and brought up in Germany. So how did this start like this journey? So this journey started uh, as a 10 year old because I spent five years of my schooling in Kolkata. I went to Calcutta International School at the time. And there, my again, as a 10 year old who's coming from Germany, playing football, being interested in football is, is a very, very normal thing. And that's where my first interactions with Indian football, with local football uh, happened. And uh, yeah, and that's where my love and passion for Indian football uh, has become that it's, it's just not passion, but it's also has become work over the last yeah, more than two decades. So like uh, you came to Kolkata and that kind of sparked in you like you know i want to do something for indian football or you saw something that inspired you not not at the time to be very honest uh, i was following indian football again i was following german football i was following indian football and this was in the late early 80s early 90s so there was no internet there was no you know all these easy ways of following and tracking leagues today uh, my father for example used to send me uh, a weekly a uh, football magazine, which is Sportbild, which is still exists. He, he used to send me that by post. So about a yeah. week to 10 days later, I was reading up on what was happening actually in this part of the world. Uh, I have to also say that in those days, Remscheid was the second Bundesliga club. So they were actually a professional team playing high up. So I was following German football that way. But while back in Germany also was trying to follow Indian football. Um, and, and sort of in 96, I started, I went to university and I, and I got to know what the internet was. You know, at the university, we got an email ID. We were like, what are you going to do with an email ID? We didn't have a clue what all of this was. But it enabled me to follow sort of Indian sports. You know, that was the prime of Leander Pace as Mahesh Bhupati being a top doubles pair. There was a website by a gentleman called Ajay Krishnan. So then, you know, in, uh, in early 98, I had the idea of why not create something... Know, learn HTML, create something. I created a website about myself and then I created a website even about Kolkata, about Remscheid. And then I started something on Indian football, which turned out to be IndianFootball.com. Like, uh, back then, I believe no one was writing about Indian football, especially on the internet. We had uh, magazines and like people like, uh, like sports journalists back in India would also write something in the articles. But there wasn't any blogger. You were kind of a blogger back then. They could say that. So like there was no person out there writing about Indian football. Like, so like, didn't you think that this is a big step I am taking? Like, 
no one is doing that i don't know if going to be successful or actually, not actually no but i'm saying act actually no because it was out of the fun of or the passion there was no commercial interest behind it so the idea was to again i was keeping myself informed uh, there were three newspapers which used to have a website in those days the hindu the indian express and the telegraph you know everyone else you know didn't even have a website um so so keeping track of things was quite difficult but it was a time you know when indian football was growing you had the national football league at the time in 99 bachun bhutia got transferred to bury uh, india went to england in 2000 on a tour so you know there was a lot of hype a lot of you know hope that that you know that indian football is is, is going to grow and and it's going to take the next steps and uh, the idea of course it was very idealistic maybe some might say naive when when i started the website and it was quite interesting that within 18 months sort of uh, two two boys joined me with within indianfootball.com one was chris ponaka to daniel the other was uh, daniel ponaka to and both of them were based here in germany chris lives 140 kilometers away uh, daniel about halfway with me so we were actually three boys sitting in germany we were running india's oldest and actually at the time also only football website that's quite a story to be very honest <laughs> back then when you started like there were as you told there were many people who were doing this so like didn't you think ki i am doing this for the first time i don't know how this going to turn up or something like that uh honestly no because again there was no thought behind this there was no sort of interest of building i don't know a career or a business out of this this was just a a thing out of sheer passion Uh, that i that i started indianfootball.com and again at the time there was there was no platform there was no website which was looking at 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 indian football there was there weren't even many let's say even on cricket at the time so you know the internet was at, at its very very early stages um uh, the internet was slow um you know things like what we're doing now zoom was was unthinkable of in those days so it was just a, again it was just a simple page which which results with with a little bit of news uh, where we were trying to keep the world informed or i was at the start and then with the others trying to keep the world informed on what is happening in indian football so like i i just want to share a story like you told how you started for me there was when i started when when i went into college my shift was you know we have this like you have stayed in kolkata you know there is this intra college tournaments so like in the college i went i found out we are having a inter college tournament the next day so like i went out there with my with to my section i'm like you played football i have asked him who who wants to play football for the team and there was only two kids who put their hands up that i want to be a part of the team like we need at least seven people so like i was just going around with people like they have you ever touched a football if yes then you are in my team and by like in that way we created a team and we had people and of course i won't be taking names but we had people who would come up to me and say me ki i want to go at first down and it's like what are you trying to say man like that's the type of and then i realized you know people out there aren't really aware that much so i thought of making this that then uh, many like i was talking about 2018 so like that then many people were doing it in english like HITC sevens or P four were doing it in English, and I I thought why not make this content in a uh, language that that is the most beautiful language in my opinion in the world. I hope you would agree to that as well. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Bangla. So like I do we as in there's a whole group of friends. We do it. Uh, we cover football, global football as well as well as Indian football in Bengali for our region. Like that's how we started, and that's. that's the thought process of me going into the channel going making this channel so did you did any of this type of situation occur in your mind while you were creating this because like one of these kind of moments you see ki i need to make more of like videos like this or write about indian football um the thing is that see i i as a kid as a 11 12 year old i already had a interest in writing so so that was one i i, I follow news uh, in a uh, i would say uh, most probably in a very german systematic manner you know i do follow my football which is indian which is german which is international i follow 
general news. So, you know, I keep myself informed. Um, the idea behind IndianFootball.com at the time was just to, to take Indian football to the world, just to keep people informed that, hey, guys, there is something called Indian football. Nowadays, it's different. We now have, you know, the eighth season of the Indian Super League. Uh, you know, so, so people in the world know that Indian football exists via the One Football app. You can watch Indian football around the world, uh, the Indian Super League live. Uh, via Facebook, you can watch the, the iLeague live. So if you want to, you can follow Indian football whenever, wherever you want. I think that is something which is totally different than what was the case in the late 90s. And, and it's just keeping people informed, trying to create sort of people also to understand that, you know, that there's Indian football has a, a long, uh, a massive history, um, which should not be forgotten. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that you can bring out from the past. But on the other side, it's a question of, 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 of again, keeping people informed on what was happening Again, the focus in those days was the National Football League, which was the precursor to the I-League. Um, on, on the local leagues, you had in Kolkata, you had in Goa, you had in Mumbai, you had in Delhi. So, you know, I had tons of leagues happening and tons of competitions, tournaments happening and just keeping people informed with what was happening. So, like, you were writing these for the people around the world. You weren't making this for Indians, but you were making this for the world. So, that's it. Okay. Uh, just you it told does, about it, India. It didn't matter. It to me, it didn't matter who was reading it. I think it, it, a lot of people were following it in India as well. But the idea was to again, whoever had access to the internet in those days, and we're talking, the internet was something I wouldn't say elite, but it was you know a niche uh, sort of thing where people were following it. So automatically and there was a bigger reach around get about 20 25 maybe 30 million indians around the world so it was also to dia- diaspora to reach out to them and show hey guys listen there is something called indian football there is something you know there are these big teams big clubs there's this happening uh, there's the national team and other things and just just keep following indian football just you told previously that indian football has a great history like we talk about india in the in 1950s and 60s Till 70s, I would say Indian football was one of the best teams in Asia. So after that, like we were once one of the best, best teams in the world and in 20 years, we were nowhere. Like in 1970s, I believe we were the favorites going into the Asian games. And in 1990s, no one gave us a shot. They, they can't play football like that. What changed in that 20 years span, if you can elaborate, what, what transitions transition India went through? In that 20 years? I think that the problem is that what Indian football faced that in the 50s and 60s, uh, you know, where Indian football was at its prime, um, the first mistake India did was not to take part in the 1950 Olympics. I think that's the biggest blunder that the All India Football Federation has ever taken because uh, till today you will see that from an Indian sporting perspective, the Olympics is given uh, a very, very high valuation where the the global championships of respective sports, in most sports, uh, they rate them higher than the Olympics. And football is a prime example that the FIFA World Cup is something men's and women's is much, much higher rated than, uh, than the Olympics. Uh, so that is, I think, the first mistake that happened. Second mistake that happened was that Indian football used to live in its own bubble. Um, they didn't realize that in the late 60s and then in, properly in the 70s that the Japanese, the Koreans took up the sport seriously. Uh, later on in the 80s, you had the Middle Eastern sides who took up football seriously. And we used to live in a bubble and, and some people still live in that bubble of East Bengal, Mohan Bagan and Mohammedan Sporting and don't realize that how big or how small they are compared to the rest of the world. Uh, surely they have huge fan bases. But um, the biggest problem was that you were looking to play and, and win trophies, you know, play the, uh, uh, play the local league. And then you would go on a merry-go-round and play then the play the Dora and the IFA Shield, the Rovers Cup and all these other tournaments in the South, in the Northeast, in the North, wherever they, they were going on. It was just in 1995 that uh, the then FIFA General Secretary Zeb Blatter gave a recommendation and said, hey, India, why don't you have a national league? You know, mm. so, so, so that has been a big, big blunder. You know, I think the second biggest blunder that besides not playing the World Cup, that the All India Football Federation and also the, the state associations never realized that it was more important rather than playing all these tournaments and playing these local leagues to actually create a national competition. 
a National Football League or an I-League or Indian Super League as we have today. And this is something that we, we are now having to play catch up. Again, the Japanese planned it very, very properly. In 1992, they started the J-League. The Koreans, uh, the K-League is a little older, but you know, uh, you have the leagues in the Middle East. And all of that is, 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 is a problem, is a fallout that we've had that uh, Kolkata has been a you know, hotbed of football. Goa, Kerala. Kerala has always had a problem that Kerala has a lot of talent. People are very interested. But Kerala, mm. you know, now finally seems to have a proper Kerala Premier League. So yeah. that is the biggest drawback, I think, that the structure of Indian football, the management, the administration of Indian football uh, in the old days used to be a big problem. And uh, I, I also think, he, I don't know if you want to agree with me or not, but after the 1970s, you know, we talk about with the insurgence of Ajax team and Rinus Michels bringing in total football. Football changed forever. Like before that, there was this long ball, route one football. Like English football went out till 1990s like that. Till Sir Alex Ferguson and further into the early 2000s, Arsene Wenger changed English football a lot. But in Europe, especially, football changed in 19, after 1970s. Like, you know, we talk about the Bayern Munich, the Ajax, then in 80s, Liverpool. And after that, football's graph has been a lot steeper than it was previously. You no, know, we can talk about Herbert Chapman's Arsenal and all, all that, but that was primitive football, you know. But with the insurgence of modern football, the steep has been much higher. And we people in India still at this point, are still trying to figure out ki ha, wo route one football, we're going to play that route one football and like play it to the wing, see what the swingers going to do. Like, why aren't we able to adapt ourselves with the modern football needs? I'm not t- telling the team to play like, you know, t- like counter pressing or like play like Barcelona or Bayern Munich because you can't do that. But the fact is that, you no, know, even if you want to play a counter attacking football, I totally get it. But still, like the basics about fo- in modern football, you see, like the structure is being very good, tight at the back. We don't see that. Like uh, recently, we are seeing that a little bit, but no, we don't see it on a regular basis. Uh, and we are talking about the top clubs in India. Why is that? So, if you think, if you can elaborate on on that, it's very simple. That you have uh, the kids uh, start off very often football at uh, at a too old an age. You know, you're not starting, your four, five, six, seven-year-olds are not starting to play football. And um, the second problem is the level of coaching that these most of the kids are getting around it. So the problem is that if, it, if, if uh, a senior level player in an ISL team, in an I-League team, or even in the national team has to learn the basics, uh, has to understand the basics, uh, then you know where your problem is. So if you are expecting quality football, you have to learn it at a young age. You have to give the kids uh, enough experience of training sessions, uh, game time. And only that will improve the quality. And of course, the quality of coaching. The quality of coaching is a massive, massive issue, I think, at youth level. Um, and as long as that is not sorted, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to raise the standard overall at the top level. Because then you realize that when Indian players have the dreams of going abroad, uh, you have Sandesh Jingan at the moment who seems to be the next one whose sort of European dream has been shattered by reality that he sort of is not good enough for even for a, for a lower level Croatian, Croatian team but that's the reality so the reality is that whoever's gone over the last 20 years be it Pai Chung, be it Sunil Chetri um, all of them have failed you know, and that is, that is the reality of where our football actually stands and while we are, de- we are developing you know, it's not as if we are stagnant or we're getting worse. Mm-hmm. But um, people around us, especially the Japans, the Koreas, the Middle Eastern sides, even Southeast Asia to some extent, the sides are developing much, much faster than Indian football. Yeah. And uh, when you say that Sandesh Shingan and Sunil Shetri, like the Sunil Shetri, Sandesh Shingan and like Paichun Bhutia, they didn't make it uh, to like... Um, in Europe, because and like we are telling about people, players who are all the best players India have ever seen. We are talking about players. So like, if they aren't good enough, like I don't know why people are still dreaming and people like us. I am also a part of it. We, you know what? 2026, 2030. We are just throwing in numbers that India will qualify for the World Cup. 
But in this rate, in this rate, like like you said, the, we saw our Sandeep Singh is our best defender in the team, in in the national team. And if he is not good enough for a second division Croatian side, as he's gone there as a fourth choice defender, four or five choice centre back, and hasn't played a single game, I don't think how people are so optimistic about India making thirty or two thousand thirty four. I really don't see any point in just being that optimistic. Of course, I, I totally get it. If you are not optimistic, you know the results are not going to come. People, people not going to watch football. That that was pretty much the case in both NFL and the I League. But like, do do you think there is a like there is a process because you have been you have seen German football very closely. So do you think that uh, there is a way that Indian football can evolve in a certain way so that You know, going into the future, like India could potentially play in a World Cup. I think there is uh, a lot of work to be done again at the grassroots and at youth football level. I think the the next generation of footballers need to be better. And that's the first step. But I also think that uh, the integration of players of Indian origin uh, from Europe or mm-hmm. from North America needs to be considered by the government of India at some stage. It's something that I've been uh, propagating for over two decades. I started. This topic with the AFF in 2001, where we first discussed it. Uh, until date, it doesn't matter who was in the, in in control of the government, but the government has not been willing to change the regulations, and that is that is a big problem. I think that we have quality players in Europe, you know, uh, three four of them at least who would improve India in such a way that most probably we would be a stronger outfit. But that's a that's a very difficult difficult outlook. But again, as I said, I think that grassroots and youth football. is the key even though of course we are still we are in the middle of a pandemic a lot of football is not happening so again that's again a drawback um so a lot of work needs to be done to improve the national team so absolutely like uh, you know for the past two years i don't think there was any second division or third division or fourth division like in the, in like kolkata and like i don't see football happening that that used to happen before the pandemic there half like i believe there is only the first like cfl happening i don't think there is second division of cfl happening this year and uh, i don't know like for for, for players yeah. who are going up hmm. so it's 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 a problem it's a problem again you've had especially the youth leagues haven't been happening uh, some regions have been trying to play football but if you see for example a state like mizoram there's been no football at all mizoram has been sort of like the hotbed of indian football over the last few years Uh, in Kolkata, they've tried. I think they've played up to the first division. Uh, in Goa, they've played also. No, as far as I know, the pro league and the first division. So the lower level football and and the the youth football is the biggest sufferer in all of this. Even think about the women's football. You know, India is going to play in the Asian uh, Women's uh, Cup um, in in a few days, and and the, the Indian Women's League has not been held for two years. So so it is very difficult, um, and it, it makes it difficult. But again, it you know you need to find solutions. Which is in the interest of of uh, football and, and 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 takes it really forward. Now you talked about women's football, and I am ashamed to be like I found out that India have really a good chance of qualifying uh, to the World Cup. This I found out like a month ago, and probably this is the time we should promote our girls. Like you know what, this is, this could be a changing factor. At least I believe. No, I don't. I know there are many people who don't watch. women's football out here and i and i when i saw your status today you uploaded the aif uh, announced the 23 man squad and i personally i was barcelona i am barcelona fan i i watched women's football as the, as well alexia putelas and, and and i don't know anyone from the indian team i hardly know one or two players from that women's team but i, I don't know there is no coverage about women's football in india and probably we should like i i know keep We, at this point we should uh, promote women's football as well because i mean they have a better chance of qualifying to the world cup than the men's at at this current stage so like just promoting women's football uh help india or help younger kids be it boy be it girls take up the sport like it happened in 83 with cricket do you think that could be an uh I think it's a big opportunity. I think women's football over the last, yeah, five years, uh, the FF has been promoting it uh, with the with the advent of the the women's league. 
on one side, uh, the national team with his exposure, I mean, uh, think about it that uh, one and a half months back, India was actually playing in a tournament in Brazil and played even in Brazil, you know, which is even in the men's game is more at the moment unthinkable of. So, so the potential that our women have is, is, is there. Um, I, I, I feel that the, the group is doable. Again, China by far is too strong for us. But I think Chinese Taipei as well as Iran are beatable, which means that we could qualify, surely qualify for the quarterfinals. And if we're lucky to get the right opponent, you know, and then go into maybe the, 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 uh, the um, uh, world playoffs, who knows? Maybe India will play in 2023, the Women's World Cup. So, so that is possible. And, and again, the, the rise is, is good to see. And yes, I think if India does qualify for the Women's World Cup, uh, I think not only for women's football, but for women's sports, it would be a huge, huge push uh, in India. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I don't know much about women's football, as I said. Can you just tell me who are the X factors who can make the difference out there? So, like, I, I would be watching women's football from 20th, of course, but no, I just need to know some names if you can help me with that. So, if I start at the back line, uh, we have got Aditi Chauhan. Uh, who's quite experienced. Uh, Aditi in the past has studied in the UK, has even played for the West Ham ladies. Um, so she's quite experienced. We have uh, in the back line, uh, Asha Lata Devi, who's our captain. We mm-hmm. have uh, Dalima Chibar as well, who is sort of one of the poster girls of, of uh, Indian women's football. Mm-hmm. Dalima uh, has been studying uh, sports psychology in Canada. Um, so, so, so she is someone to, to look forward. Um, if I look at the attacking line, sadly, one of our best, Bala Devi, will not be there. Bala Devi, mm-hmm. who has been playing at Glasgow Rangers Women's, yeah. uh, she will miss yeah. it because she had an ACL. Um, but we've got a very talented teenager called Manisha Kalyan, who scored that uh, goal against Brazil. So, yeah. so, so, so that's there. We've got Kamala Devi up front. Um, so we've got multiple players. Uh, um, so so yeah. So it's 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 a talented team. Um, I think we've got a very very good coach in, in Thomas Denerby, who you know Swedish, who's coached the Swedish women's national team, who's coached Nigeria both the teams in World Cups. So I think yes, we have uh, um, we've prepared very well over the last six months, given also the pandemic, and I feel that I think the women's team has. Uh, in it, in them, to qualify for the World Cup. Absolutely. So, like, uh, you talked about the uh, Women's League, now moving on to the Men's League. You know, uh, you were talking about, like, previously we were talking about India qualifying for the World Cup. Do you think that bringing in ISL, another tournament, like, we talk about the NFL, NFL failed, I-League, almost failed it. And now, like in 2014, the insurgence of ISL. Do you think this league would help India uh, in the future or this would be another I-League 2.0? Like, this would be a failure as well. I think that the um, Indian Super League has been built on, on different pillars. I think that the Indian Super League has been built on, on, on a lot of money being spent on football. If you see the infrastructure that the clubs now utilize, be it for match days, um, be it for training, uh, if you see the television and the social media coverage, I think this, these are all factors which were never there before. And the quality of foreigners that have come in over the last seven, eight years is much, much higher than in the past. Uh, would I call the I-League a failed league? I think the NFL turned into the I-League. But if I look at the I-League today as a stepping stone to the ISL, I think it's very, very good because it's given a massive spread to club football in India. If you think you've got, you know, real Kashmir in the north, you've got the clubs in the northeast, not only uh, Shillong and Jong in the past, but now Aizol, Neroka, Trao. Um, you have now uh, Shinili Deccan, for example, from, from Andhra this season. Um, of course, Gokulam Kerala from, from, from the south. You had Bangalore FC in the past in the I-League, who are now an ISL club. So, I think club football has evolved, uh, the, but there is one big problem that I feel that could derail Indian club football in general, and that is the profitability of the clubs. Because um, the commercial viability is not there. And as long as you can't change that, 
there is always a risk that a club might shut or might fold uh, because they say that commercially does not make sense or commercially it's actually a problem to run a team. So like uh, in India, most of the clubs are making a loss, like running clubs. All, all clubs make a loss. But, but then again, I, I do have a question, but then again, when you talk about the big clubs, like you talk about the state, I'm not talking about the state-sponsored club because they can endure that loss. But if you talk about Manchester City or Chelsea or Barcelona or Real Madrid at this point, they're also a loss-making organization. And you no, know, I, I was reading this article like when Barcelona under the previous leadership of Joan Laporta, like when, when we were the best team in the world, like from 2006-2010, yet we were winning everything, Barcelona was winning everything, but still they were making losses. So like, uh, why clubs like that could sustain and why clubs like East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, or like big clubs like Bangalore on a longer run couldn't sustain themselves. I don't know about Germany, uh, you could probably help me. Uh, I think the, the German the Bundesliga system is commercially most probably the most viable system in world football as a league. Uh, Pre-pandemic, um, if you take the first two divisions, I think 33 out of 36 clubs were making a profit. Um, that is different in the Premiership, that is different in Spain. Let's put it that way, with Barcelona and with Real Madrid, they're very lucky that the Spanish state has its hand over them. So, I don't, I think the Spanish state would never allow them to go bust. But again, if you're talking about fair play and all that stuff, if you take example, the transfer of Ferran Torres, that should have never been allowed. You know, so, so there's, a, there's a reality. Why was Messi sent away? Barcelona's uh, way of working, uh, if you would come into a normal commercial world, you would shut it down in five minutes. It doesn't work. Coming to the Indian factor, it's, I think Pat Jindal said it last year that he, for example, as JSW, is making a loss of about 25 crores a year. Uh, JSW can sustain that loss. Uh, but if you take East Bengal as a prime example, East Bengal has been looking for commercial partners and trying to find the right partner to, to work around to be able to play in the ISL. But it's been a mess. You know, the relationship with Quest turned out to be a disaster. And this, this whole thing with, with Sri Cement is even worse. And, and I was abused last year. I said openly on social media last year, I think if East Bengal is not ready, it's better to play I-League than rather try to play the dream of an ISL. And, and if, mm. if East Bengal fans are honest to themselves, um, despite of what Renedi has been trying to do over the last few matches, um, for, the, for the stature of a club of East Bengal, this is what has happened over the last years. is actually a disgrace to the to the entity of East Bengal club. Uh, Mohan Bagan has been, yeah. And Mohan Bagan has been smarter. Uh, they realized that they needed a partner. Uh, they have tied up with Mr. Goenka. Um, and I don't understand Mohan Bagan fans who shout, remove ATK. Because, okay, you can remove ATK, but if Mr. Goenka is not paying you the money, you are not an ISL club. So this is one thing also that these clubs, sort of these traditional clubs need to understand and need to learn that we have come into a commercial age where you need the spending of 40, 50, 60 crores a year to be able to sustain, to play at the top level. Otherwise, you know, with your four, five, maybe even 10 crores, go and play highly. And that is, that is a reality of, 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 of the discrepancy that we have uh, between clubs and between entities. And again, you're not allowed, especially in Kolkata, I think a lot of people don't want to wake up to realities that, that the football world has actually shifted when it even comes to Indian football. If, if you see that, for example, everyone says, oh, you know, East Bengal, Mohan Bagan, followership, this and that, everything. Uh, the Kerala Blasters has the biggest followership in the Indian Super League. They have the best TV exactly. ratings in the Indian Super League. So, so those are realities. Wake up to those realities. Those, those East Bengal, Mohan Bagan should be the biggest. But you need to do a lot to ensure to be the biggest. And this is sadly not been done because, again, we also go back and and live in history and live in the past. And, and, the, and the reality is East Bengal is very, very lucky that there's no relegation in the ISL. Otherwise, last season or this, not last season, but this season, they most likely would, would go down. I, I'm an East Bengal fan. So, like, I know this is, like, this is a diabolical situation in East Bengal at this point. Like, you know, previous season, I know people would say, you know what, we, don't, we didn't have players. We made, it, made a team for ID. And I was like, you know, if you made a team for I-League, play the I-League. Huh. So, like, they bought in some players. And I 
understand like Robbie Fowler did what he had to do back then. He bought in some big names, like questionable big names, but still like Bright and Stainman provide turned out to be good. And we did something, but this season, like you had that time to build a team, build a squad. But I believe is being all management is to be blamed as well. No, because they say they didn't had, have time because they say you had even less time. You had to put together a team over two two days. You had forty eight hours to put a squad together. Last season, at least, as again, whatever Robbie Fowler said about the Indian boys, but Robbie Robbie Fowler at least got a set of Indian boys. Who had been signed, even if they were I League players. This year, you didn't even have the Indian boys. You had, I think, two or three boys. You had Ankit Mukherjee and you had Mohammad Rafiq. Otherwise, you had no players. So, if if that is the thing, then the end result at the moment that you see on the pitch is what you get what from what you do. And and again, um, Manolo Marquez. Uh, sorry, not Manolo Marquez. Uh, Manolo Diaz. Manolo. Uh, um, you know, again, have, will have been a very, very good coach in Spain. But again, someone has not done their homework. You've brought in a coach who doesn't speak the language. And especially when a team is underprepared, the coach needs to be able to speak to any and every player. You see that Renity has been able mm. to get out more out of this team. Then mm. Manolo, but you realize that this team is just not good enough for this league. Now that's a reality, and and if you like it or not, that's a that's a fact. And as sad as it is for the millions of fans, but um, you know the, the, this rather play. I would have rather liked to have seen East Bengal play the I League and finally live the I League title, and then would have moved on to the ISL maybe in two or three mm. years. Find the right partner. Find a partner with whom we can work. But this, again, is is next season. Mamta Banerjee again going to step in and tell Sri Cement, okay, please continue for another year. Is that is that is what is going to save the situation? Because both sides are not talking. And they- <laughs> most most probably Sri Cement got disconnected. Oh shit! One second. Ah, one second. <laughs> So like yeah, you were talking about East Bengal and like you know both the teams like C Cement and East Bengal is in talk, work, talking, but like you know the fans out here are blaming the management because you know people out here don't know what the, the contractual situations been, so like you know the obvious blame is to the management and telling that people out here you know they they are not compatible, and of course they aren't you know let's face it. East Bengal isn't ha- isn't got hasn't got that best uh, management, and you know you were t- talking about East Bengal changing. You know there were hardly any players out here this season. There were two players who were contractually bound to play for East Bengal, and uh, another thing like East Bengal, I believe uh, we finished second in the eighteen nineteen season under Alejandro, and after that uh, the next season which was called off due to pandemic. You no, know, uh, we changed the squad. No, we didn't change the squad. We a little bit tweaked the squad. The next season after that, that's 2021 season. We went into ISL with a new squad, totally new squad. And in the 21-22 season, that is this season, we are already ch- again changing the squad a lot. So, two things like you know, any team you see, we talk about ATK Mohan Bagan as well. They do have a core of players. Okay, like Mohan Bagan didn't have that core of players, so ATK provided them with that core of players, and then. We have Indian players or foreigners coming in filling those holes, but with East Bengal, every year there's eleven new guys playing. Like that does affect your performances as well. What's your say on that? Of course, it affects your performances. Your problem is, of course, in this situation is uh, that Mohan Bagan was very, very lucky to join hands with ATK, where ATK. Came in as ISL champions, Mohan Bagan were I League champions. Uh, you kept Habas, you kept the core of the team, took over some of the players that you thought who might be of interest from from Mohan Bagan and put them over into ATK. But de facto, it was actually ATK playing. Even today, de facto, this is still an ATK, a core ATK team yeah. playing. 
uh, which I, I fear a lot of Mumbagan fans will, will have a problem to accept, but that's the reality. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but the reality is also is that, um, again, with East Bengal, I go back to the fact that it just doesn't make sense to just jumble up a team for the sake of jumbling up a team and then playing ISL. You see the planning, you see the organization, you see a team like, let's say, Bangaluru FC. They had a core team which played through the I-League, even started playing ISL. Then they got rid of them because they were getting too old. You got, got rid of the, of the players. You were unable to get back a striker of the quality of Niku. And, and they're still in rebuilding phase. Uh, Kerala mm-hmm. Blasters kept a core of the Indians, but switched all their foreigners. And Kerala Blasters has not been successful over the last few years. They're now top of the league. Um, Jamshedpur, if you see, um, mm-hmm. Owen Coyle looked at where are my holes and then accordingly brought in those players. So, so for East, East Bengal needs to have to find the right partner um, mm-hmm. who's willing to put in the money and then jointly decide is who's going to have the say or ideally appoint a professional management, a professional football management with an understanding of how to run the game of how to commercially commercialize the whole thing and then get the best out of it. Because the way they're running it at the moment, they will always be fighting for last. I mean, I <laughs> found it bizarre. I found it bizarre if you listen to some of these uh, Bengali talk shows that there are on, 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 on YouTube, that people were actually saying, listen, they put in a good squad together. Uh, East Bengal can challenge for the top four. <laughs> and it's like, how are they going to be able to challenge for top four? These guys have never played together. Or they have one month of training, that's enough. But again, the same mm-hmm. people, these same people, then a month later when the I League star, sorry, the ISL starts and Bengal is not doing well, they abuse the goals, they abuse the players, they, you're not good enough, this, that. What do you expect? I mean, I give Renedi a lot of credit to what he's achieved in mm-hmm. those three matches. If you think even the Jamshedpur match which he played with 11 Indians, uh, three or four of those players were be forced to play in positions which they don't normally play because the squad being put together doesn't even fill up all the 11 spots that you need. So, that's a, that's a reality. And, 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 and the reality also this season which you see in the ISL, why do you see so many goals? Is that you've reduced mm-hmm. from five to four foreigners and you realize that your defensive stability in all clubs, has suffered because mm. of that. So, again, that's why I say that if you want to develop, if you want to grow, exposure is good. But again, your exposure also abroad, you need to realize what is my level, where do I play? I jokingly say my hometown team, FC Remscheid, a former second Bundesliga club, they now play in the sixth tier. I think no one from the Indian national team could play in that team. We have a complete team of players who have players mm. who played in the youth Bundesliga. So the education these kids received at youth level is X mm. times higher to what our kids have received. So therefore, these are all, rea- this is sad, it hurts. But I'm honest enough to speak out on this and say, guys, these are the realities. We need to work on this. And again, the Indian Super League is just eight years old. It's a very, 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 very young league. Absolutely. But you are talking about like uh, we changed the number of foreigners from five to four. So there, there, there's a counter argument that people say, you know what, if there's five center back, uh, five foreigners, two of them go to the center back role, one CDM, one CAM and one striker. So the whole skeleton of the team is based on foreigners. And people are like, how do you expect India to produce players, goal scorers or creative players or the defensive midfielders if you don't have Indians playing in that role. Like, there, there, there's this argument as well. So, like, what's your state on that? that? That argument is true. Again, for the Indian national team, it's brilliant. You have one additional Indian player who is playing 90 minutes or let's say it's maybe split between two players. But you have someone mm-hmm. who, Indian who's playing those 90 minutes additionally. That's good. But you also mm-hmm. have to live with that fact and the reality. That in, I felt 2020, 2021, most probably was the best I, ISL we've had. And this season, yes, despite all these goals, these super goals and whatever it's happening. But you see a drop of standard. And you have mm. to live with that drop of standard, most probably for two, three years. 
and then hopefully the standard will rise again. But the Indians need to pick up because this season also you see how much problems all of our goalkeepers are having. Mm. Last season you would have never discussed, oh, Arindam is, a, is, is having a difficult season. Uh, mm. Amrinder is, is not having the best of seasons. Gurpreet is struggling. Vishal Keith is... All of them are struggling. I was hearing a stat today that the 20, uh, sorry, the 11 teams have used 20 goalkeepers so far in the New City. Which is, which is, ne- this is closing in on nearly every team has used two goalkeepers. Which is an mm. unusual stat. Which is an unusual stat. Yeah, that's, that's true. Like, you know, we can't blame the goalkeepers for that. You know, of course, they were making howlers. You know, I saw Arindam play against Mohan Bagan and the goals he conceded is just simply... The heartbreaking, yeah, as but, but it but it happens. You see, that is football. That's uh-huh. the uh, some will say that's the charm. The guys who win will say the charm, and for the losers, it's the pain. But the problem is that again, was Orindam fit? I think Orindam, first of all, wasn't fully fit going into that game. He wanted to play and he wanted to prove a point, maybe it was even over you know, over motivation or something of that sort. Um, mm-hmm. and again, the defense of, of SC's Bengal is not that good. So it meant that he was under pressure to perform anyway. So and then these mistakes happen; they're natural. Most of again, a lot of these mistakes are simple mistakes that these guys are doing. But it happens because they're you're you instead of getting let's say three four shots on goal, suddenly you're getting ten twelve. You're being exposed much more, and that is a problem. And you talk about his fingers defense. I don't know, like under Diaz, his fingers did have a structure at all, and like you know, I I was. Seeing this games like you know, everyone's attacking, everyone's defending. There is no midfield at the moment, you know, I, as if we were in 1940s and 50s playing that style of football. And like, I don't know, like with Renedi, of course, you know, first of all, I I, just, I never had the opportunity to speak to him, but you know, what a man he is. You know, I just yesterday I just texted him on Instagram, you know, what the, the way you played, you know, at least you made us compete with the teams. I know Kis Bengal isn't the best going forward, but the way we played defensively was fantastic. And he was kind enough to reply with that. You know, that's uh, for a top class manager playing in all the biggest clubs in India. He didn't need to do that. So, like, he did that. And that's, uh, that's lovely to be very honest. And uh, but what do you think the change happened after Renedi Singh came in? I, I know you were very co- good friends with Renedi. So, like, uh, can you elaborate on that fact? Like, what change did Renedi bring? See, see Renedi has always been someone who's very interested in his uh, football and he's interested in, in, in tactics and understanding the game. Um, what he has done over the last few years, he's, of course, been assistant at uh, Pune City uh, under Habas, under uh, um, uh, David Platt. Um, has then gone back. He, he he's the head coach of an of, of the classic football academy over there. He was also for a few weeks head coach of Neroka, but again, uh, classic then pulled out and then it all changed. Last two years he's been now with 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 SC Bengal and he's a, he's a again he's a quality quality coach. He's a quality human being, and he's football crazy. You see that on the field. I did it. Envy would most probably try and play himself. I think he also, again, he will never say it, but I'm sure that he might be thinking in his head, you know, if I see one or the other player play, most probably I can play better than them, even at the age of 40 plus. <laughs> and and, and that, is, that is the sad part, that, that most probably mm-hmm. uh, Renri Singh, with the football understanding, the football knowledge that he has, has, most probably now would also be better on the field than off the field. Even though off the field, yeah. again, he's, again, with those 11 Indians, um, with a lot of players out of position, being forced to play out of position, um, mm-hmm. he got the maximum out of it. Sadly, again, uh, Ishan Pandita That's scored it. that goal. But again, I still, I still give him the credit for the three matches that he's played so far with this team. Absolutely. And uh, you now you were talking about uh, like uh, German football structure. Like this is the you know, we we're talking about German football is probably has the best structure in Europe. So can I elaborate? Like I, I was I made a video long back about the fifty plus one system, and can you elaborate on that? What like what's the difference between English football or Spanish football with German football in general? 
there are multiple things. I think the Bundesliga is structured in a different way because, as you said, there's the 50 plus one rule, which is 50% plus one vote needs to be in control of the club. Uh, the rest of the stake can be sold to outside investors, which means that the club per se always remains in control of the club. So you don't have a situation where the Saudis come in by Newcastle, the Glazers by United, uh, the Emiratis by City, uh, Kroenke has bought Arsenal, Chelsea is bought run by Abramovich. Uh, again, in Spain, a lot of teams, smaller teams are owned by different people. Let's see, even Ronaldo owns Valladolid, you know, the old Ronaldo. Um, mm. So that is not possible. Um, the commercial structure in such a way that tries to even out the Spaniards and the English have tried to copy it, that it's not about only that the champions, so to say, Bayern Munich gets all the money, all the revenue from television and sponsorship, but it sort of evens out that even the team which gets relegated get a, gets a certain amount of money. So in that way, I think the system tries to be fair. But again, Bayern Munich has been so successful over the last 50 years that they are just too strong for this league um, and financially just have, you know, again, Bayern Munich's, uh, despite of the pandemic, has a turnover of 650 million, uh, which is incredible compared to what the others are having a turnover. Yeah, you were saying that, like with the 50 plus one rule, the Saudis and the big club, big state sponsored clubs can't come in. But the fact is that, you know, when we see about the history, you know, in the 70s or 80s, Hanover was one of the biggest clubs in Germany uh, competing with. Bayern Munich back then. But now it's all about Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich, in European stage at least. You know, hardly we see Dortmund going to the quarterfinals, uh, at least, you know, last time Bayern, I believe, under Jorgen Klopp qualified for the finals. Uh, apart from that, it's all about Bayern Munich. The, probably it's, Germany has only been represented at this moment at the European stage by, by Bayern Munich. And uh, whereas in we say when a proper Premier League, there's a lot of clubs like about Chelsea, Man City, uh, Man United to some extent, some would argue, uh, Liverpool and other clubs are as well as competing. Because so do, don't you think the, you know uh, Germany is having less of a representation in the European stage? I think that yes, uh, I th- but I think they have to sometimes have to blame themselves. I think Dortmund. Uh, in a group with Ajax and Sporting Lisbon should have qualified, should have actually won the group. Um, they have to blame themselves. They were, you know, after two wins in the first two games, um, they lost their next They were humiliated game. by Ajax. They were humiliated um, by Ajax. Yeah, but that was also referee, red card and all. You know, so, so again, there was, that factor is also there. Um, you know, give them the doubt. Uh, Leipzig in a group with City and PSG beat themselves. I think um, Leipzig should have Beaten PSG should have also beaten City. I think they were that good. But again, I think under Jesse Marsh, the structure wasn't as good as they could have been. Um, and Wolfsburg, the same thing in that group. But Wolfsburg, again, is a, is in shambles at the moment. So the problem is also at what time of the season are you playing European football? Um, I'm interested to see how uh, Dortmund, Leverkusen and then Leipzig do in the Europa League. I think that could be, those three could be potential title contenders in that competition. Um, and and uh, yes, I think. But on the other side, um, I think you know. If, even if you say you know the Premier League is so interesting, uh, but I saw uh, and I and I put that out on Instagram a few, I think two weeks ago. Uh, Pep Guardiola is turning the Premier League also into a Bundesliga. So so the reality is also is that actually it's becoming a one horse race. That City is likely to win uh, the title most probably mm-hmm. in in seven seven eight out of ten. Uh, again, Bayern is going to win it 10 out of 10, but uh, likely, or 9 out of 10. But again, even in England, your so-called competition is really going down because um, if a Man United, if an Arsenal can challenge for your top four, sorry, I mean, then we can't talk, talk about quality. Then the league is not quality, even at Tottenham. And, and again, and, and that's, a, that's a reality that, that, that one has to, to, you know, and I've seen a lot of Premier League over the, the Christmas period Seriously, I mean, I was not too... Imp- and especially the refereeing. I mean, you know, in Indian football, you criticize the referees a lot. The Premier League referees with VR are even worse than the Indian referees without VR. That's also reality. <laughs> but, then again, but then again, you know, uh, people have this general argument, you know, Bayern Munich, 
the dominance of Bayern Munich is really down to the small clubs. In the clubs about Mönchengladbach or Leipzig or let's say Dortmund, not keeping their best players and they leaving for the Bayern. So as you can see, for Sabitzer, no, he doesn't play for Dort Bayern Munich. Hmm. He doesn't start for Bayern Munich, though he was the best player for RB Leipzig. Bayern spot their rival team's best player and just benched him. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's not about benching him. The point is, um, you have to see the, the reality of the chain, right? Um, the Premier League looks to be interesting. I mean, the richest club in the Premier League at the moment is 19th in the table and that's Newcastle, right? Hmm. Um, the, the problem that you have, again, and the 50 plus one rule on one side does ensure that the league per se is quite even. But Bayern Munich has been successful over the last 50 years. And the problem has been, is not that it's the money from the Bundesliga, but it's rather money from the Champions League, where Bayern Munich earns 60 to 100 million extra a year. That has moved them away from the rest of the league. So that has made them much, much stronger and much, much bigger than the rest of uh, the Bundesliga clubs. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, I just remembered an incident. You were talking about referee decisions in India. And I remember, if you have watched, I'm sure you watched the game that uh, ATK Mohan Bagan versus uh, Mumbai City FC, I believe, this season. The Mumbai City crashed ATK, something like that. So, I remember there was this moment, like, there was this uh, offside on the handball goal that uh, yeah, the club. Mumbai City scored. You know, the second goal was in handball. The ball, the ball came up to the hand and that went in. Something of that sort. And I saw at halftime, Abbas just going after the referee. You know, he was just abusing him to the level. No, but no, that's the... I, I don't know, the poor lad was just standing there and listening, take it all in. But if you do it in Germany, England or like, you know, Spain, Abbas would be out. No, he would be out for like... No, you wouldn't. Take example. What did Klopp do the other day with the referee? He abused the referee. What yeah. did the referee listen? He, I don't know. I forgot the name of the referee. He told, no, he told him, listen, whenever you referee, I don't know what you have against my team. Why are you doing this to us? Klopp says this as well. Guardiola does this as well. Um, so again, it does happen in other leagues. The job of the referee is the most difficult job in football. I don't want to be a referee. Even I shouted, and I've shouted at referees. I've abused. I mean, when I was used to run Mumbai City, I've abused referees uh, to, mm. to in, in very nice language. Uh, uh, and and again, Habas has picked up the fight. I remember the first season of the Super League, Habas was thrown out because he picked up a fight with Robert Perez. So so again, mm. it does. You know, this. Yeah, there's a lot of energy going um, to, to 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 for that to happen. Absolutely. You know, uh, just uh, we are um, like we don't have much time. I believe you know we can talk like this for hours and hours because the knowledge you have about Indian football and world football is just you know I I just can't pay to learn more and more about this structure. You know, we talked about Mumbai City FC with the uh, CEO of you were running Mumbai City FC first season, I believe. Yeah. So, what's the experience like being the CEO of a club? Like Mumbai City, of course, now it's run the state sponsored club to some extent. Uh, I think City Group bought the club, Mumbai City now, but back then it was a new franchise. So, what's the experience like running a football club? You know? So, it was again, it was um, a, a, a very interesting experience. Um, I was the CEO, so I was. Um, I came to Mumbai City and I had a clear-cut plan with my technical director, Nishan Mehra, that we wanted to be the best team in India. Um, we sat on the draft. So, Nishan and I uh, did, I think, an excellent job on the Indian draft. I think we put together the best Indian potential squad because we hadn't signed a coach by then. We were talking to a lot of big names. You know, I think we were talking to the who is who of the available managers uh, uh, to, 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 to join Mumbai City. Um, we even sat on the, the international draft. So I think we, we put a good team together. Then got Nicholas and Elkar, uh, Fred Jungberg, uh, Andre Moritz as well later on. And um, But again, we had a few issues why Nicholas and Elkar couldn't play. Uh, had to pick up a fight with the Premier League about his suspension and other things. He didn't play. 
um, because I don't care if it's the Premier League or FIFA or whatever. If I if I think I'm right, I'm right. Um, but it somehow didn't work, and and uh, uh, and I still think that we had the best team and we should have won season one of the Super League. And 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 but I I, I was happy afterwards to see that uh, through certain people who are brought on board, uh, through the structures that we created at Mumbai City, that even last season when they won it, that most of the people who were there in season one actually won the league title last year. So, and, 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 and even in 2014, I had the idea, actually, I went to Manchester City and said, do you want to tie up with us? Uh, do you want to work together? I was trying to get Frank Lampard and David Villa signed for, for our club. I even, even tried to sign David Beckham. I mean, I was, I, you know, we, we had crazy <laughs> ideas of trying to do something. But um, it didn't happen. It happened later. Uh, and I'm very happy mm. to see that uh, Mumbai City uh, has now become a part of the City Football Group. Um, has won uh, both the League Shield and the title last season, and and is 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 establishing itself as one of the biggest teams and franchises in in Indian club football because that's where uh, this team deserves and needs to be, and also in the interest of Indian football. Absolutely, like you know, now Mumbai City, the way they are playing football, like we are like overhyped because we haven't seen. Football like that, you know, that position-based football or that type of football is not common, you know, in Indian football. So now, do you think that with the influx of cash, who's the cash the right? The influx of money from the city group, you know, Mumbai City could think about competing on the Asian stage as well because you know, we, in the past, it's been all Mohan Bagan. Being the dominant, dominating teams in the country still haven't had any clear-cut vision. Of competing in Asia, because uh, you can talk about East Bengal once went to the semi-finals or Bengaluru once went to the finals, but that's you no know, twenty years, twenty ones. That was one occurrence, some sort of that. Like, so, so do, do you think that now with the emergence of ISL and teams like Mumbai City, who, who does have that uh, luxury of money to buy in good players? Uh, could potentially challenge for Asia? I think the first step that Mumbai City needs to do it needs to establish itself as sort of the number one club in India. I think, you know, that what, what City has done over the last few years in England, uh, the same thing is going to be tried by um, Melbourne City, New York City, you know, by the sister clubs. Um, it's interesting that all all these four clubs actually won their national titles in 2021. So they're all champions mm. with Manchester City, New York City, Melbourne City and Mumbai City. So that's a big achievement for the City Football Group. So that's step one. The, advantage, the biggest advantage besides the money actually is, is, the, is the, uh, the scouting network that you get access to. So they will be able to get you the better players. And also maybe also for Indian players, let's say Napuya, to be able to maybe play in a city club somewhere else in some other country and get some experience. So from that perspective, build the club and then maybe in three to five years, yes, then start challenging for Asia because uh, Asian football, which again, as with national teams, the level is much, much higher than the level that we play in India. That's absolutely true. You know, uh, so like, uh, so uh, you were to- telling about, a few minutes back, you were telling about German football and, you know, about your home club, which was the sixth division now in German Bundesliga. But still, you know, there were players who played in the uh, youth Bundesliga tournaments. Like, they played for in the youth Bundesliga. So, like, uh, do you, what's the advice? If you want to advise a youth, like, taking up the sport, like, who was playing football for the last five, six, seven years, a 13, 14 year old kid watching this video, like, what's your advice going to be for? for our youth, so how can we develop or they can be the better versions of themselves? I think is, um, again, have realistic dreams. I always say is that dreaming to be a Ronaldo and a Messi is nice. If you achieve that, even better. But try and be a Bajan Bhutia or a Sunil Chetri first. That's a level that most Indian footballers will not achieve. Um, also see at the options of the academies of clubs in India uh, where you can get the exposure and the right kind of training. Can you get into the academy of, let's say, a Bangalore FC? Can you get into the academy of FC Goa, you know, who are, 
who are amongst the Tata Football Academy. You know, those those are the ones where I would target. Don't target foreign countries because, again, for minors to move to Europe is illegal. So, you know, trying to target Europe is, I think, unrealistic. And and try to be a better player. Try to surround yourself with guys who are also as ambitious as you are. And try to maybe jointly try to develop and try to evolve. I think that's the most important advice that can be given to youngsters. And if anything, uh, like, you know, report or something like that, if, if one philosophy of German football you want to implement in Indian football, what's it going to be? If you want to pick one philosophy. I think German football, the biggest thing that, that you see now um, is the, the flexibility of being able to play different systems and styles. I think that is something, that is the biggest gift that Pep Guardiola has brought to German football when he came and coached at Bayern. That the teams were suddenly, you know, it's not a, a strict 4-4-2 or a 4 2 3 one was, was, you know, preferred Joachim Löw system. Play three men at the back, play five at the back, want to play one up front, two up front, three up front, four up front. You know, play, be flexible. And I think that's the most important thing that as a player, if you are uh, able to play in multiple positions, uh, I'll take an East Bengal example. I think it's very difficult at the moment to say what is the position of Mohamed Rafiq. Because I think mm. he's played from right back to left attacking player. I think he's played except centre back, I think, and striker and goalkeeper. I think he's played everything else in the team. So this is something which I think is very, very important to be able, and also to be able to play with both your feet. I think the, the the ball control is the most important thing in today's world. And focus on your brain, work on your brain to be able to to understand what a coach wants with you. I think that a lot of players in the ISL and I League falter with foreign coaches because they, the demands are too high from what these players can actually uh, uh, cognitively uh, process. You know, then you said this and I remembered this uh, Ralph Ragnarik was, and I was watching this coach's voice interview of Ralph Ragnarik. He was saying, you know, a coach's main job is to implement his idea to the mind, heart, lungs, kidneys of the players he's coaching. And, uh, you know, with, 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 of course, you know, people, like with this Bengal, we could see that the, like, the players didn't understand what the coach wanted from them. You know, they were all over the place. You know, there wasn't a proper system. And I don't know if there is a game plan in Maliano Diaz's head. Because I highly doubt it. Uh, hashtag agenda against Madrid. Anyway. Uh, no, I think he had a think... game plan. But I think the problem is that he will have come with a certain thought, idea and process. And I think, again, language is a very, very key factor. Um, I don't know how good his assistant was as a translator. But I think a lot of the stuff got, got lost. Uh, you see it with other teams. Also with Kiko Ramirez, for example. Uh, hmm. at Odisha. Um, language is a very, very important factor. If you see Odisha, if you see the squad they've put together, they should be you know, challenging for the top, but they're struggling at the moment. Because I think that if you don't speak English as a coach, even Habas didn't speak English at the start. Uh, Juan Fernando, uh, Sergio Lobera, all of these guys didn't speak English at the start. All of them now can speak English. So a lot of things have changed. And I think that if you can communicate with your team, your team understands what you want to get out of them. Um, mm-hmm. then it's going to work for you. Absolutely. You know, uh, I, I don't generally, we're talking about this Bengal so much in this podcast, but I don't understand the uh, timing of Maria R- Rivera at this point, because, you know, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. You know, Renity is doing a fantastic job. Was doing a fantastic job with the club. But R- Renity doesn't have there. a pro... Renity doesn't have a pro license, so he can't continue for the rest of the season. So you have to bring in a pro license coach. Okay. I, so there's a there's no, a reason behind it. And again, again, I, I don't is, yeah, difficult. Yeah. Difficult. You had to take a decision. Um, Renity can't do it for the whole season. Um, so therefore, um, Mario is 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 a good option because he knows the club. He understands the fans. Um, so these are these are small little factors. He can speak English, so maybe it'll work. But again, the quality of the of the foreigners now coming in will decide if East Bengal can can give a little better account of themselves in the in, in the second half of the season. 
But I think you know if you gonna go for a coach at this point, you no, know, this is fans' perspective. I know you, you better know like there's a lot of process goes behind it. But you know, as a fans' perspective, now that Albert Roca is free, you know, we should go after him because you know he changed. To be honest, he changed Hyderabad. Hyderabad in the first season was struggling. He was all over the place. He was the coach of Hyderabad. He was struggling. The next season, he of course he went to Barcelona after that. But still, now when he was there, he put in the whole squad, and that was the previous last season. It was the best Indian side. You know, when you talk about youngsters or youngsters. Yeah, but the problem is, I think a lot of coaches will not jump at the chance to coach an East Bengal side, which is in shambles. Let's be honest about That's that. True. It's not. It's a reality uh, again, which a lot of people will not speak about. But it's a it's a, it's a massive problem. Okay, so like you know, uh, I should be ending this right now, and I would love to do another podcast with you because you know. Sure, sure, more than welcome. This this would go forever and ever. So like, yeah, thank you, sir, uh, for giving us your time, and we will welcome. see you very very soon again. Thank you. Sir. All right, you're welcome. Bye.